<laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be putting a new Monport light burn motherboard in the K40. Alright guys, this is Monport's new board uh, to replace the K40s and connect it to Lightburn, the original nano board. Alright, this was sent out to us from Monport. Um, currently we've got the Cohesion 3D board in. We're going to swap this board to see how it performs and compare it to both the Cohesion and the original Monport board. Alright, let's open this up and see what all comes with it. Oh, okay. Look, huge first step that uh, beats the last one from them, instruction manual. Before, if you remember, there was nothing. We had to look it all up online. They eventually got a manual for it online, but when we got the board, there really wasn't anything there. Tools, screws, that's awesome. Standoffs to mount it. <coughs> the board. This looks much more in line with the cohesion board versus the other Monport board. If you remember, it was bigger, it had the blue cover on it. Uh, it looked really good, we just didn't love it. Okay, USB to USB-C. Um, that's actually pretty long. It might not be long enough, but we did buy a really long one uh, last time. And a cable for something, we'll have to find out through the instructions. Now I did uh, look online and read about this board. I want to say it's like 120 as this video is being made. That obviously could change in the future. So 120 right now. Um, it says you can use the original limits, which was another problem with the last board, having to um, actually solder, rewire those limit switches um, to be able to use it at all. Not a huge fan of that. I did have to solder it back to the original part for the cohesion board. Hopefully we don't have to mess with that at all this time. Gonna take a look over the instructions, see what all we need to do, and we'll be right back. All right, this looks very, very straightforward. Um, from everything it looks like, it's pretty much plug and play. So first I've gotta remove the cohesion board. Since we're testing and everything, I'm not gonna take it off of the back panel until we decide exactly what's going to stay in here. So I'm just gonna un Plug it, pull it out, and we'll put the new one in. First things first, unplug your machine. You do not want power to it while you're messing with the cables. The new board is the same size as this, so it will fit, um, or the same size as the original board, which I believe the cohesion is fairly similar. It's a little bit bigger, but uh, screw holes in the same spot, and it came with new ones, so that's awesome. All right, here is what it looks like. So we've got our USB power on this side. No switch like it had on the old one. And nothing that we're going to have to actually do any kind of stripping and screwing into terminals. So all in the original setups. All right, so we're just going to take a look at the instructions here. It's great. It's got pictures, arrows pointing to where it's at. It matches up. We got power there. Um, next one is the control cable. It's that three one there, right there. Perfect. X motor here, which it is labeled on the board. It's hard to see, but it is. And then the Y motor right beside that. Perfect. Limit switches here. Very straightforward. Uh, air assist, if you have it, we do not control our air assist from here. And then integrated control, which I believe we also don't have. So, simple enough, let's get it plugged in. So power, the limit switch. Now I did mark these, which motors are which. So I've got an X and a Y on these. I've moved these around enough that much easier to do it that way. All right, this extra cable is actually the control. So it's gonna go from the board straight to the machine it actually takes out looks like it's going to take out this control piece again not super thrilled about that but right now we've got to control it both here and in light burn so i've just been running it 100 percent in light burn and controlling it here but if we're controlling it in light burn and only light burn that's fine too um, as long as it's 
quick enough. This is one of the things that I found that the old one really didn't do super well because it didn't have what seemed like a very fast response. So, black and red, they're in different spots, so I don't know which one goes where. Uh, we'll see. One into the power supply, one into the board. Looks like the ones that are plugged in, very hard to read, is the ground and 24 volt. So now we can get our USB line run, power back up the machine, do some tests, and see if it works. All right, I've plugged in the USB-C. The red light came on. Plugged back in the machine, so I'm going to close it. I'm gonna stay really close to the uh, emergency stop, and we're gonna turn it on. Okay, looks like it started up fine. Good lights inside. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back off. I'm gonna get light burn set up, turned on, and then we're gonna turn this back on, see if it connects, and homes. All right, light burn up, now we're gonna turn it on again, see if uh, it's recognized in light burn, and what it does as far as homing or any of that. All right, light burn is up, I'm gonna hit devices. We are going to find my laser. It is going to scan and see if it can find it, and then we'll see what it does. No response. Oh, it does find it. Okay. So that's the right spot. That's the right size. We're going to add that. All right, going to change the name to Monport, and we're going to save. We might adjust these a little bit later like we did last time because it doesn't quite use all of the space that's available. We will hit Next. Auto home your laser is going to be rear left. Uh, we're going to hit finish, but we're going to see what it does at the laser. Just in case it does connect in home, we want to watch. This is the first time. Nothing. Didn't do anything. I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on and see if that connects it now that we've imported the device into Lightburn. Okay, powering on and off didn't do anything. So... Going to troubleshoot it a bit and see what I can figure out and I'll let you know. Alright, I just needed to restart light burn. Everything else was set up. Alright, it is homing correctly. Not moving correctly. Alright, it looks like it's moving a little weird so I'm going to import a picture try to do a frame on it and see if it's framing in the right spot where it should be okay what we're going to use is just our power scale it's what i want to use to test with uh so what we're going to do is i'm going to start with that see if it will uh, frame correctly and if it does then we'll move on to uh testing it Okay, a few things I learned. First, the origin does need to be in the back left with the homing for the mom port. That's the opposite of the cohesion board. It actually uses it in the front left, even though it homes in the back. I don't know, it's just something different within their programming. Now, if you use that, <clears throat> I figured out with light burn, this took a bunch of reading, Light Burn is going to import any designs that you had previously in the orientation of how it was designed, right? So the orientation is now here instead of here. So this is going to be upside down and or mirrored or both. So you're going to have to pay attention to that. And if it's one that was designed in a different format, you're going to have to flip it. In this situation, 
only have to flip it top to bottom because that's the only origin that changed so now we can test it it's going to home correctly in the back it moves up and down correctly when I had the origin down here it would still home correctly in the back but the Y axis was going backwards I could flip it to where it was going the right direction however then it thought that this wasn't within the target so it exceeds the machine travel and the machine machine position retainer right so the original size you had it basically thought the design was outside of that so it was running an alarm it wouldn't work so just have to flip any of your designs that you were using previously in light burn with a different machine or board so now with where we are we can frame it make sure that it moves correctly I think that's correct we'll put a board in there and we'll cut this and see how it does here's just one of our test boards that we've been using for other things and make sure that's in a good spot all right perfect this particular power scale is set up to change the power as it goes up we'll be able to watch the mini amp to see if it's in the right spot compared to where we were writing and look at it afterwards and just see how it goes so it's gonna make some noise I am gonna turn air assist on as well as get the exhaust on and we'll see how it does now the first part that it's cutting is the words that's set to 30 millimeters a second on the speed and 50 percent definitely not cutting at 50 percent but we'll keep letting it run and see what happens doesn't even look like it's firing the laser at all right now. Alright, I stopped that. It's not firing the laser in any way, so I'm going to have to figure out why uh, that's happening. Okay, so this wire, I put it in backwards. Um, I'm assuming that something in this means control board interface maybe I don't know this goes into the board this goes into the power so we plug that in correctly and now we can test again all right turn it back on plug it back in make sure you get the power out when you're messing with that power supply now we can test it again so I will reframe framing works so we are going to hit start again all right looks like it is working we are seeing milliamp moving that is good I've got our reference sheet here so we can watch the milliamps where they're at and kind of make out so right now it's hovering around four that's ten percent awesome so it looks like uh, it's pretty good right now you can see the laser is working correctly so far this is way better than what we saw <clears throat> with the original uh, light burn controller let's just see it's bouncing a lot so I'm not sure if it's going to be losing speed we'll see afterwards how big the boxes are if they look like it's burning correctly or not as well as when it grayscales and dithers uh, at that high of a percentage it might cut clear through it but that'll be good to know as well all right all finished up let's take a look and see how it did all right that looks pretty good yeah it burned real deep on the 90s hundreds the boxes look like the right size it's way too much power for this but it actually let us know and this is 50 percent and i mean it was way more than we need um so this board looked good let's uh put a picture in here dial down the uh, percentage and see how that looks all right so we found a picture that we've done before uh with one of our other lasers uh, it's just the hobbit hole door that we did for Aaron's key chain holder and we're just going to resize it on here see how it cuts on this all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go fairly fast at 50 millimeters a second drop the power down to 25 percent uh, we'll see how that does we're going to need to dial it in a little bit but that's what we're going to start with
right, 50, way too slow. Uh, it was burning good, but way too slow, so I turned it up to 150. Uh, it's been a while since we've been on the K40, so I got my speeds wrong a bit, but it actually turned out really good. So it's, it's not maybe as dark as we would like it, but we would adjust that with say some borax or something else uh, like we've always done or turn it down a bit because it actually did cut into it pretty good um, so it could go even faster the percentage could probably be a little bit lower but the detail looks great um, you can see the wood grain down in there uh, definitely performing way better than the other board did all right so board went in great um, easy the only thing was how I set it up uh, just needing to know that I need to flip anything that we built before on the other origin. Mm -hmm. So definitely go back left, either build new designs entirely or, you know, mirror, flip, however you need to to get it to look right and light burn, and then you can transfer it in. Power looks to be reacting way better. The old Montport board had a lot of trouble. It was slow. <laughs> it didn't react very fast. This one great all the little details are there yeah. so definitely an upgrade over the old lightburn uh monport board um and in lightburn so it's better than not having lightburn um it's very similar so far with what we've done to the cohesion 3d board mm -hmm. um at a cheaper price so we'd have to just keep doing stuff with that to see if it's on par with everything or not but yeah great board i can definitely say uh, it's recommended. Yep. So exciting news. Yeah. Monport did raise our discount for you guys up to 10%. Uh, yep. Works on everything, including the new board. Absolutely. Uh, we'll put that code down in the description for you. Yeah, and we're going to go back and put it in all the old ones to change yeah. the code to the new code. Yeah, because it'll work on everything. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, 10%. 10% instead of 6 Absolutely. So, Which is awesome. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.